This is the regular board meeting of January 12th, 2023. It is now four minutes past four. We will begin roll call. President Chavez. Present. Vice President Cortese. Here. Clerk Doe. Here. Member Adetta. Oh. <laughs> Here. Member Lee. Here. All right. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to provide public comment to the board on a closed session agenda item at this time? We have no in-person, nor do we have any online comment. We just have um, for open session. Okay. All right. So please note that all meetings are recorded. All regular and special meetings of the Board of Trustees and Board Study Sessions are stream streamed live on meeting nights and are also available for viewing the day after the meeting by accessing the district's YouTube channel listed on the district's webpage at www.esuhsd.org under the quick link section. The board is not able to respond to items that are not on the agenda or any personal issues. Your comments will be noted and will be directed to the superintendent and or the appropriate staff member for response. Interpretation of this meeting in Spanish and Vietnamese can be heard by accessing the link and following the instructions shown on the agenda or the district's website. The board will now recess to closed session. So now we are gonna resume to open session. Um, so we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if we could all stand up, please. Hey. All right. Welcome to the regular board meeting of January 12, 2023. Members of the public, please submit your public comments as follows. You may raise your virtual hand in Zoom to request to speak and offer comment in real time. In person, public commenters will be allowed and treat three speakers at a time in the boardroom. Upon conclusion of a speaker's public comment on the agenda item, the speaker must exit the boardroom. You may also submit your public comment online by accessing the link to the form on the district's homepage at www.esuhsd.org or the link on the agenda. Please reference the agenda item in your written comment and limit your written comments to no more than a thousand characters in length. Public comment submitted online will be read onto the record. Please note, all meetings are recorded all regular and special meetings to the Board of Trustees and Board Study Sessions are streamed live on meeting night and are also available for viewing the day after the meeting by accessing the district's YouTube channel listed on the district's webpage at www.esuhsd.org under the quick link section. The board is not able to respond to items that are not on the agenda or any personnel issues. Your comment will be read onto the record and will be directed to the superintendent and or the appropriate staff member for response. Interpretation of this meeting in Spanish and Vietnamese can be heard by accessing the link and following the instructions shown on the agenda on the district's website. Okay, so now we are on to item 5.0. 5.01, the superintendent and our board members may request that items be removed from the agenda for consideration or carried into the future board meetings. Is there anything that anybody would like to move? Yes, administration is requesting that item 13.03 be moved to the subsequent board meeting. 13.03. All right, that will be moved to the next board meeting. Any others? No? Great. All right, that's item 5.0. 6.0, so um, now we are gonna go with a presentation and discussion regarding student wellness. Uh, I apologize if I am mispronouncing names in advance, please correct me if I'm wrong. We have Misaki Nguyen, student at Silver Creek High School and Kaylee Dang, student at Evergreen High School. 
Did I say it right? Yes. All right. I think y'all have the floor. Is that right? Superintendent? That's right. If we have our, our two wonderful students come forward, uh, these students have been part of a county effort in terms of advocating and thinking out student wellness. Come, Feel free to come right up to the mic right here. When you get there, we'll press the button and until it's green and we're ready to go. Um, have been working with other students and other um, uh, advocates are around the county towards wellness and uh, had made were seen observed making a presentation a while back and so wanted to invite these two students to talk a little bit about what they've been up to what they're advocating and how also that the, we are collaborating and uh, how they're aligned with our own wellness work within the district uh, that we've been doing for the last couple of years so I'll pull up your presentation here and try to follow for, just give me a nod when you want the next slide. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for being here and we can't wait to hear your, your story. Make sure that your, um, your speaker is green. There's a little uh, light green light. Yes. Um, can you hear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's my voice. All right. So hello, um, we'll be presenting on student mental health and wellness and our kind of feedbacks regarding that. And I just once again want to say thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to present in front of you all today. All right, so I just wanted to give a brief overview of our agenda for today. So first we'll be talking about what is SWAG and give a brief summary of us and our activities. Then we'll be talking about why mental health is important to students, then discuss on the pros and cons of what we thought of the mental health and wellness centers. And then after we will talk about our solution, which are which is um, student youth advisory groups, which we'll mention more later on in the presentation. And after we'd like to open some time for questions. All right, so before you get started, we just wanted to give a brief introduction of us. So hello, my name is Misaki Nguyen. I go by Shidei pronouns. I'm a junior at Silver Creek High School. And my name is Kaylee Ding. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a freshman from Evergreen Valley High School. And we are both members of SWAG. SWAG is a youth, youth <laughs> is a youth advisory group that stands for Student Wellness Advisory Group. And our statement of purpose is, the Santa Clara County Student Wellness Advisory Group is dedicated to representing and uplifting youth voices through advocating, destigmatizing, and collaborating with youth mental health and wellness needs. We leverage our diverse personal experiences and perspectives in order to shape mental health and wellness policies, supports, and services. And we are made up of around 20 members all over Santa Clara County um, that range from students in middle school to college, and it is headed by Dr. Shawnee Powell. <laughs> All right, so now we'd like to give a brief overview of what we've been participating in. So first, we'd like to discuss, as you can see here, the California School-Based Health Alliance Professional Power, where using, leveraging our experiences as youth, we kind of talked about how youth advocacy can be brought to mental health spaces in schools and how that could change, bring change to schools. And we also participated in the MHSA Community Conversations, where we were able to talk to lawmakers about our opinions on student mental health around Santa Clara County. And on top of that, we facilitated our very own student mental health town hall in collaboration with SRI. So we were able to conduct uh, focus groups. So we were able to hear some of the voices around Santa Clara County on mental health. Finally, we'd like to discuss the CSBA or California School Boards Associates panel, where we actually met uh, Ms. Vun and Mr. Doe who are with the RS today. So it's so nice seeing you guys again. And we kind of talked as panelists about our experiences with mental health, our peers, as well as the mental health and wellness centers at our schools. And over here, we just kind of included an image of us at the conference. So on the left there, you can see me and Kaylee and Dr. Powell is standing in the middle and the rest of the members are on the right. So before we kind of divulge into the Dear Leaders Project, we'd like to talk about why we even made it in the first place. So we interviewed these students in order to get like an overview on the mental health and wellness situations at the schools. And using this video, we kind of use it as a guideline to, to how we conduct our SWAG activities and what issues we need to focus on in the mental health and wellness sphere. So please enjoy.
could have been sent to the moon. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Can we send a link if that's all, or should we move on? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That sounds great. All right. So first, we'd like to talk about why mental health and wellness is so important to students. And for that, we need to look at the contributions to the problem first. So first, we believe that COVID-19 is, of course, a huge like part of that reason as because of the advent of the pandemic, you know, there's students have been thrust into two different environments, online learning and in-person learning. And that kind of switch kind of, you know, makes students struggle socially and emotionally, but I think it also impacts them economically. I know a lot of the students and our schools have been impacted economically by like the struggles and um, the struggles of trying to support their families as well as like businesses being impacted during the pandemic. So that's definitely one of the reasons for in, like turmoil that have emotionally affected the students. And next, we believe that um, academic expectations and the competition in general is a huge in, a factor that contributes to this because we live in San Silicon Valley, one of the most competitive places, especially for students. So in order to survive here, there's a lot of pressure in order to maintain a certain level of grades. And that's what we've seen in our peers as well. And finally, we believe that ethnic and orientation related discrimination is, of course, a present like issue that's been affecting students because based on your background, you experience different social like pressures as well in your personal life and your social life and your school life. So because of these expectations and stereotypes, it creates a lot of mental stress to students. And how those contributions affect students is that I commonly see a lot of depression, feelings of loneliness, social isolation, and anxiety, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic, where we were all kind of shoved into our houses for a very long time without being able to reach out for support systems and meet our friends. And then after um, coming back to school, we were kind of abruptly shoved into our um, new lives at school and that caused a lot of anxiety for students and especially like what Masaki said about how competitive school is. Um, people are so focused on getting those perfect grades and studying so hard that it can cause burnout and reduce academic performance. And so this is why we wanted to mention the mental health and wellness centers at Eastside Union School District. So one of the really great strengths is the excused referrals. So being able to walk into the mental health and wellness center and the referral system is very quick and easy. And the common, well, the local calm space on school campuses is very easy to access and the community around the uh, mental health and wellness center is very welcoming and comforting for students to walk into. And it's accessible, so no need for transportation or any type of fee. And the easy to access resources, so social workers are always there and welcome to help you and they can refer you to easy to access resources whenever you're in times of need. So now we'd like to talk about some improvements that could possibly be made to the centers. And this is kind of taken from what we've heard of from our peers, as well as interviewing the social workers at our schools. Um, so one thing that could be improved upon is that we should have more events to kind of unwind the stigma around mental health. Because um, me and Kaylee, when we hear at our, around our schools, like we still hear mental health be used as an insult, as a derogatory term um, towards their friends and other peers. So I find kind of having a way to destigmatize that and promote more programs or host events that promotes that kind of acceptance of mental health may be a good solution in regards to that. Second, we'd like to talk about the cult resources for cultural transparency 
transparency, sorry, and cultural diversity. So I know that Eastside Union High School District has a high um, percentage of Latino and especially Asian students on campus, as well as LGBTQ plus students. So kind of having a way and the resources to refer them to those specific ser um, services related to their background may be a good way in order to kind of increase our, your the mental health and wellnesses, wellness centers range to the students. Next, we'd like to talk about promotion on campus. So what I heard from Kaylee, actually, um, she's a freshman at the moment, but a lot of her fellow freshman peers do not know about the mental health and wellness programs or centers at their school. And uh, I've heard that from my peers as well at Silver Creek. So that's why I believe that more promotion regarding um, mental health and wellness centers, whether it be in the newsletter or on announcements, that may be a good initiative to have. And finally, we'd like to talk about the students and admin kind of trust. And there's just a rift between the administrators and the students purely because of the generational like differences as well as the, you know cultural differences between um, the age groups. So that's why we believe there needs to be like a middleman that helps implement policy and be able to integrate it among the students. So well, now you may be wondering, how can we address these problems that we've mentioned before? So what we thought about is having the implementation of school specific youth advisory groups for mental health. So similar to our activities as in SWAG across the county, the youth advisory groups would be composed of approximately 10 to 20 students selected by leading advisors to uphold and promote mental health and wellness, except on individual campuses. So the students would conduct mental health and wellness activities on the campus, but maybe a student representative could meet with the district in order to um, promote networking among the groups, as well as create changes and initiatives that would improve the mental health and wellness of several campuses. And these school specific youth advisory groups may bring youth advocacy to school systems so students are able to gain this leadership knowledge as well as adults working with our uh, youth advisory groups are able to connect with students on a deeper level and understand the struggles that they're handling at school. And they can focus on issues that impact the student population. Students are able to connect with their peers in a way that's a lot more deep than administration can with students. So being able to talk about their struggles um, together and figure out problems, and we're able to communicate that with administration. And districts are able to allocate the money for mental health resources that actually matter and are what actually are needed by students. Last and not but not least, we believe that putting students as the face of change in schools is one of the most important parts of this youth advisory group, because as I mentioned before, the gap between administration and students can be something that's difficult um, without a middleman in order to bridge the gap between them. And we believe that these youth advisory groups would be perfect for that, as they can advise on the needed policy that students themselves are worrying about, as well as have them be able to integrate it among the student population, because they are the student population, they know the students best. So how can these youth advisory groups help our current mental health and wellness centers like improvements that we talked about before? So first, addressing the cultural diversity issue, the advisory group is made up of diverse individuals made up from the student population. So they're able to advise and implement actions that represent the student population and understand the cultural nuances between the different groups on student campuses. So we believe that's one positive and that we can see that being effective with our own SWAG group. Our SWAG group is and composed of very diverse individuals of different genders, of different sexualities, of different ethnicities. And therefore we're able to, we're, we're able to cohesively work with each other in order to bring a diverse um, range of solutions to mental health across different groups. Second, it addresses the issue of lack of staff. So um, although there's uh, many social workers working at our schools, which we're really grateful for, of course, there's still limited number of staff that can operate this. In my school, there's, on there's only two social workers who are manning the mental health and wellness centers, yet they tell me that they are very overwhelmed already with their current schedule, and it's hard to expand their programs into other places. So the student youth advisory groups could solve that issue by being the extra hands and legs of the social workers and host programs such as what's listed here, the mental health fairs or peer counseling groups that can further effectively help students um, with their mental health and wellness needs.
And then, of course, promotion and destigmatization of mental health. Students are able to have that connection with other students and start the conversation that many people don't want to start. They're able to voice their struggles and communicate with other students more effectively than administration ever can. And they're able to promote the wellness centers and they have a trusted voice among students. So students might be, feel more inclined to go into the mental health centers if there isn't that stigma surrounding it and they're hearing it from a trusted voice. And of course, the um, campaigns for destigmatizing mental health, like um, Masaki mentioned, the mental health fairs. So, is there any questions? Go ahead, Trustee Cortezzi. Yeah, thank you for your presentation um, and good work. I mean, this is so critical right now. Um, the youth advisory groups, are they uh, planned or are they in existence right now? Um, to my knowledge, I don't believe there are any youth advisory groups across the school districts. This is just something that we thought of after seeing our own work at, in SWAG and seeing how this could be applied, except to the local school level in order to improve the mental health and wellness of specific student populations in specific school districts. Because of course, because of living conditions and whatnot, there's different students who are living in different areas. Well, well, well done. I'm so proud of all your work. And I know that uh, uh, Trustee Doe and I, we attend the uh, Santa Clara County Board Association for dinner in October. And that's why we met both of you. And we're so surprised that you are very articulated and really a front run, you know, to change the face of our students. And you represent well of our district. And that's why I was like, wow, wow, this is, uh, we're very proud of all your work. And um, I'm, that's why I invite you to come in and make presentation to the board uh, because some of our board uh, colleagues did not attend that night. And, uh, and you are one, uh, both of you, are, you know, are very good on the panel and explain and answer all of this question that the audience have for you. So very good. My question for both of you um, is, uh, did you promote like, uh, you're gonna graduate next year, right? Are you continue to promote or are you gonna have the group to continue the work that you have uh, involved right now in your school? And um, another things I want to mention that um, uh, every district, every uh, school has the wellness center and we also hire more social worker. Uh, and in one of your presentation, you did mention that still not enough, um, you know, uh, social worker or to work with the student. So could you elaborate that a little bit? First of all, thank you so much for your comments, previous comments. And if I might ask a, a question of clarification, what do you mean by elaborate? I mean like how the social workers are overwhelmed with their work currently? Yes. Yeah. I see. All right. So I can speak from my experience as a Silver Creek High School student, but um, while the uh, social workers are hosting a whole bunch of campaigns and um, initiatives for the students in regards to mental health and wellness, um, I actually wanted um, previously, I think a few months back, I suggested making a peer counseling group on campus because um, I was seeing how, especially once we were coming back to school, and especially since I'm a junior where everyone around me is very stressed for college and college applications, um, I wanted to have a way to kind of help those students and um, be able to um what is it have that space in order to be feel comfortable with each other and that's where I found out about peer counseling groups so that's why I spoke to them about it but they said um I as I was discussing with the social workers about this um they were talking to me how although it sounds like a really good plan logistically it would be very hard to implement because they would need to train the students they would need to set everything up and with their already full schedule with organizing the events on campus it's kind of difficult to branch out into that so it's more like we have 
set programs at schools, but we could do even more in order to help the students. And so that's why I believe that having these youth advisory groups may be the solution in order to expand their hand, like their reach to the students because they're able to hold these events that maybe they won't have the personal time to hold because they have other um, more pressing matters to attend to in regards to mental illness. So are you working also with the ASB? Uh, group or um no this is we haven't discussed things with the ASB group yet this is just an idea that we wanted to pitch today awesome I uh, visit a couple of school I've not visited the Silver Creek yet but um, I visit uh, on a Santa Teresa during my visit one of the student broke down emotionally and another student you know helped this student to come to the wellness center uh, to talk with social work, and it is very powerful, very, you know, really touched my heart when was, and I saw the student, you know, really broke down, and we have someone that helping them. So thanks for involvement in this wellness center and on of this social emotional. Thank you. Very proud of your work. Please continue. Do we have any other comments, questions? Um, I just wanted to step in and kind of echo the same things that have been that have been said. Um, I'm part of Student Governing Board, which is a group that does many of the same things where we're trying to bring awareness to the fact that there's um, the wellness centers because a lot of students just don't know. Uh, one question I have is for the youth advisory groups, could you give a few ex specific examples of what they would be able to do to branch out these um, mental health resources that are already existing on campuses? Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, especially our in, um, I go to Evergreen Valley High School where we do have a peer counseling group already here that is also implemented a part of the student wellness advice, um, the, um, wellness centers on campus is just no one really knows about them and um, I would say how recent has the or when did the uh, student governing board start quick question that's a great question I think five or six years ago I, yeah yeah around around that time okay so I would say it's still pretty recent um, and I mean I think any uh, another group, this uh, youth advisory group can also really help. So the um, student governing board can focus on um, things more directed towards students and maybe their uh, academics. And then this youth advisory group that we're proposing can focus more on student mental health. So each um, group can focus more heavily on each each idea that needs to be built upon and extending that reach. Um, I think I don't I've never seen a mental health fair in Evergreen Valley High School, but uh, with a swag, we hear many ideas from different districts and we've heard from Gunn High School that they've had mental wealth, uh, mental health fairs where they're able to talk more about mental health in a way that isn't like a 20 minute long presentation where students are waiting on the bleachers to go out for a break, but in a way that's more fun and engaging and makes mental health not as scary or daunting as a topic to talk about. Any other questions or comments? Great. Well, I first have to say, wow, your presentation was so moving, so inspiring, so eloquent. Um, Congratulations, it's, it's amazing. Um, I really, really appreciated just the depth of knowledge and context, as well as that personal touch. And it, it's our students' reality, right? This is what's working. This is, not, this is what's not working, but it's not just what's not working. Here are some potential solutions. And I, as a student, I'm at the core of it. Right? I think there's so much power to have your voices at the center of it. And the fact that you're suggesting it and coming up with ideas is just powerful. Um, so I wanted I wanted to name that in appreciation. Um, right now, when y'all were talking, um, it, it just made me wonder of the possibility of figuring out connections within Eastside schools that are doing work around wellness. Um, because I visited Piedmont Hills, I wanna say half a year ago, late last year, and they had a wellness fair. It was the whole quad. It was huge, and it was put on by students, and it was amazing. They um, different clubs took on uh, a table, and they had different ways to approach it. 
Um, and I don't know what club it was, but I thought this was really, really cool, which was um, they brought dogs on campus and they ha that help. These dogs are really trained and they help students. And so it just gets the different modes of needs and what students connect with more. And so I don't know if y'all know anybody at Piedmont Hills, um, but there's to, to learn a little bit more about that. Um, but this just makes me think there, there could be an opportunity to connect district wide. And, you know, with Lee, Lee, um, there are representatives with the student governing board at all the schools. And so that could be a topic of conversation. Maybe you all can connect and start that conversation, just, just an offering um, so that y'all don't have to reinvent the wheel um, because a lot of students are doing amazing things. Um, but uh, with that said, thank you so very much. Uh, this was an amazing presentation. Yeah. All right. So to honor their work, we would like to present them with uh, yes. certificates of recognition. So if the board could come down and get their picture taken with them. Yes. All right, I always love uh, starting with our students. Such a great presentation. Um, and uh, in continuation with our students, we're on item 7.0, 7.01, our student governing board representative. <laughs> we're networking over there yeah yes um okay so for updates on sgb sgb is currently in the process still of compiling the helpful links and resources such as the title IX complaint procedure that are already on the esuhsd district website um but we just like to compile them onto a page on each of the school's websites for easier accessibility additionally the officer team is working on creating an infographic to clear up confusion and answer questions regarding online AP exams that are going to take place this May. Thank you, Lee. Okay, um, now we are now on to item 8.0, uh, 8.01. Is Are there any items that um, we would like to be considered or discussed or acted out of order within the agenda? Nope, we're good. Okay, that's item 8.01. Uh, there are no items under 9.0. All right, and now we are on section 10, public comment. All right, so we start with the ones here, yes? All right. Oh, okay. So uh, members of the public may address the board on any subject not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act preclude any action. As an unagendized item, no response is required from the board or the district staff and no action can be taken. However, the board may instruct the superintendent to agendize the item for a future meeting. Any person may address the board on any item on the meeting agenda. Persons wishing to address the board must fill out a speaker request form 
via online submission at https forms.gle backslash a o r s seven x a w s s z r s s v i six. Your comment will be read out loud as part of the public meeting. Comments should be limited to more no more than a thousand characters in length. You may also raise your virtual hand in Zoom to request to speak. You will have two minutes to speak. So with that said, I believe we start with um, the people here in person. Um, and so this first one is a student, uh, Quinn Mai. Oh. Okay, that's okay. Um, are we Board Yay. President, was there a request for that to be translated within the within the room? We could ask our interpreter online to unmute and be able to uh, translate that. Sorry, we can just we, we want to make sure it's said in Vietnamese and then we can. I'm imagining that he would say a bit and then it's translated and then he continues. No, this would be the oh, translating oh, of the instructions. The okay, thank you. For the room so that we can get it voiced here. Yeah. If our interpreter could please interpret the uh, the, the instructions um, that are listed on 10.01, starting with members of the public. In case they're not aware of the clocks that are having the time. If our online translator is unable to do so. Is there someone on the panel that would be able to translate the instructions into Vietnamese? Um, kính thưa quý vị, uh, ngày hôm nay đó là có cái phần mà public hearing đó, thì uh, tất cả những người ở trong ủy uh, viên giáo dục đây uh, không có được gọi là uh, coi như là nói nói về cái uh, cái subject này là tại vì nó không có nằm ở trong cái nghị trình của bên học khu vì vậy nó nếu mà tất cả năm người này mà uh, nói về cái uh, issue này đó thì nó sẽ bị dính tới brow ác thành ra là chúng tôi chỉ lắng nghe và chúng tôi uh, sẽ bàn thuận lại sau và quý vị nào ở trên Zoom thì cũng có thể um, viết một ngàn cái character rồi gửi qua ở trên Isa Union High School District uh, hay là quý vị có thể um, đưa tay lên để mà nói. Uh, quý vị chỉ có uh, hai phút. Do we have a two minutes or three minutes? Two minutes, ok. Uh, quý vị có hai phút để mà nói. Yeah, xin bắt đầu. Please go ahead. Ok, go ahead. Your two minutes begins now. And can you please state your name for, for the record? Hi, my name is Quinn Mai. Um, I'm the um, founders and executive directors of the Vietnamese American organizations. Um, thank you for this opportunity to uh, be here. So I've been informed that um, in 2018, the district hired a um, consultant, work with um, somebody in the district to um, for the native um, language speakers. And um, the consultant suggested a few um, materials, resources, textbooks that um, from Vietnam, which is a communist country. So as um, communities here at Vietnamese Americans, we, we wanna let you know that we don't believe in the communist um, government, especially their resources in education, right? So we hope that um, those material never be brought up in the district for the for our students in the futures and um, I think we want to recommend you to work with 
our communities, people, organizations, or Vietnamese American elected officials to um, not have those material in the futures. Um, that's probably it. So I'm I'm making this source. So I'm here to not to uh, bring it up as um, yeah to attack somebody to bring up uh, an issue. It's just for 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 us to making you aware of our um, community um, se uh, sensitivity issues, and um, we don't believe in the communist textbooks or material being used. So please do not use any material from uh, the communist government. Thank you. Thank you, Huynh. Okay, uh, the next uh, speaker that we have is Council Member T7 Pien Don. Oh, good evening. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight um, to the board here. My name is Bien Doan. I am your city council in District 7. Um, I'm here to ensure the concern voice to my office. There's multiple constituents have called my office regarding this issues. Regarding the future curriculum, educating our youth with Vietnamese material from Vietnam. Instead of using the curriculum or material right here in the United States that apply to the Vietnamese American community here. I recommend that the board to further study and evaluate this curriculum to provide the outreach to the Vietnamese community and the surrounding community before taking a vote on this matter to ensure the voice of the people is heard. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, the next person who we have here is Han Jiao Nguyen. Please correct me if I mispronounce any names. Han Yao Nguyen. Thank you. Can we restart the clock, please? Hold, hold on. We want to make sure that we start the clock and that you have all your time. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. All right. There you go. Go ahead. Thank Do you, you. Like to introduce yourself first for the record? Yes. Member of the trustee board, good evening. My name is Hank Zhao Nguyen. I am the director of public affairs of uh, Council member of the office of council member Peter Ortiz of District 5. Um, council member Ortiz has a uh, previous commitment tonight, and so he cannot be here, but I'm here to speak on his behalf. And ladies and gentlemen, council member Peter Ortiz believes that the Vietnamese students of the Eastside Union High School District deserve a textbook that is high quality, free of grammatical errors, and culturally sensitive to the communities of San Jose. We have a copy of one of the pages of the textbook that was distributed for your review. And you can see that the message and image are not representative of the diverse and positive aspects of the culture. Council member Peter Ortiz urges the adoption of a textbook that is created with community input and a sensitive and is sensitive to the Vietnamese community. Doing so will ensure the proper representation of our Vietnamese community and will add to the resilience of our incredibly diverse city. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, the next person here we have uh, B Pham. Did I pronounce your name right? Okay. We can make sure, let's see. 
get this timer going. There you go. Good evening. My name is Fee Pham, a world language teacher at Evergreen Valley High School. Thank you for having me tonight. In the past few months, uh, the com community and the Vietnamese teachers have voiced our concerns about the inequity of the Vietnamese language materials, as well as the consultant that was hired to work on the program. However, it seems like our voices were not heard. Um, we're very frustrated. And so that's why I'm here tonight to bring back the issues. Um, our district is the only district in the nation that has published a series of textbooks for the Vietnamese program for high schools in the US under the leadership of Ms. Ding, who collaborated with scholars, researchers, and district teachers, the textbooks were recognized by the U.S. Department of Education and adopted by many high school districts in the country. However, six years ago, the district hired a consultant to develop a curriculum guide and to work with some teachers in the district to write the units for the Vietnamese for non-native speakers program. From surveying my colleagues, I found that the majority of us do not use the curriculum guide to write our uh, lessons, um, and very few of us use the unit packets developed for our program. Um, the program is growing, and yet we don't have adequate resources. Um, they, um, and, and the reasons why we don't use the, the, the packets or the guidelines are for the following reasons. One, the curriculum guide is very text heavy, redundant, and oftentimes it is not appropriate for adolescents. It lacks applicable and practical lessons and it includes antiquated resources and language. Two, the units developed were full of errors in terms of grammar, sentence structures, and word usage. Um, images are ambiguous, instructions are not clear. Um, overall, I haven't used it, and I've been teaching the program for six years. Um, I've used it maybe um, the, the first half of my first year, and I've stopped using it because, frankly, it is very poorly written, um, and um, there's very little consistency in the packets. Thank so. you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker that we have is Hong Dong. Did I pronounce your right your name right, sir? Thank you. So once the, the timer starts, you can My name start. is Han Jung. I am a parent, a community member at East Side, and I am president of the Viet Press USA uh, News and uh, Television. I was shocked to hear from teacher of East Side Union that do hire a consultant to work on Vietnamese language program. She introduced material that were published in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City of Vietnam for the lesson. She also included article and materials by author that were featured in the national newspaper owned by the current Vietnamese government in the curriculum guide. As you know that there are thousands of prisoners of the Vietnam War in San Jose. Among them are father, uncle, grandfather of many Vietnamese students in the East Side Union High School. These prisoners of war escaped from Vietnam and came here for freedom and human rights. The Vietnamese community in San Jose absolutely does not accept material language and authors that are associated with Vietnamese community government. I do not understand why the district does not update the thing Viet Minh Eo textbook, this one. My son, he graduated from UC Berkeley. And he learned Vietnamese from this textbook. He can speak, he can write, and everything very good. And we need you to upgrade this only. Don't use any material from communist Vietnam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next speaker that we have is Sun Lu. Did I pronounce your name right, sir? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Once you see the timer start, please start with your name. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. 
My name is Sun Lu. I am a language teacher at the Independent High School. Um, I'm here to uh, advocate for this, this book. The speaker before me talking about uh, using the packet, this packet that uh, that's used the materials from uh, the, the from Vietnam, which is the communist country, and that is very sen sensitive for the uh, Vietnamese community here. So, I think um, I have been using this book for six years now, and um, I I have been to uh, the training uh, for the new uh, language standard. Uh, I know this book was old, but it. It wasn't designed for for the new for for the new standard, but I was able to modify it to uh, bring it up, you know, to to the new uh, standard. So I think the district um, update this book, right? Um, and um, we also um, when we update this book. We need to include the, the people that, that, that made it books came from this district. This is your district, public, this one. And it's recognized by the US Education uh, Department. So that's all, um, that's all I'm here for. <laughs> for this. So please, uh, you know, consider updating this book instead of you know, getting the new one, which is get, getting the material from uh, the uh, communist uh, Vietnamese country. Thank you. Thank you. Time, sir. Um, the next speaker we have is Dr. Vuong Pham. What, Pham? Yes. My name is Dr. Vuong Pham. I am a CEO of the Assembly of uh, veteran, Vietnamese Veteran. And today I have opportunity to come here to salute all your boss member. And I would like to talk about my situation after the end of the war. They put me in the jail since 1975 to 1983 for eight years with the work or labor, no enough food, no medication, and after release from uh, North Vietnam, I live in South Vietnam, they took me to the North Vietnam. And how do we think? We graduate from university or high school, and we teach by the low level, they call re-education. They put me in the jail, but they so-called re-education. And they use the oppression vocabulary. Even though we are Vietnamese, we could not understand. And I'm very shocked now they appear in San Jose when the material book in the Union, uh, East Side Union High School. That's why I'm um, uh, request or the member, how to replace these material come from the communists with the same language influence to my uh, children. That's why we have a lot of good book print in the United States of America, teachings in the church, in the park order, or in the, some Vietnamese school. Thank you very much for your concern. Bye. Thank you, sir. Uh, and we have another speaker, um, Hot Trio. Last but not least. Here we go, here we go. I'm the first and the last speaker. <laughs> We're gonna end with the Okay, um, thank you. Uh, give me a opportunity to talk with you guy. And um, People, you heard everybody talk about. Can that. you state your name for the record, sir? Uh, my name, my my name is uh, Ha Chung, and I'm a student of former Vietnamese regular and popular foundation. And um, I uh, I was a good people. Excuse me, you're speaking too close to the microphone. 
Okay, too slow, make noise. Um, I'm victim of the communist and I escaped from Vietnam. I was a book people. So everything related with the textbook, you heard everything from teacher, student, uh, counselor, everything. I'm over 72, over 70 years old. And I, right now the textbook, I read, I didn't understand. I learned language, Vietnamese language. <laughs> from, you know, from Vietnam, after 1975, they took over Vietnam, they changing everything. The word upside down, inside out, make people confusing. Even right now, Google use a sky language from them. And when I read it, I did that, I don't understand what they're talking about. So if you put the textbook for the, for the student, high school, and they will get lost. And even talking to their parents, talk to the grandparent or talk to great parent, they don't know each other, even in Vietnamese. So please help us somehow. I don't know what you guys are doing to stop it, to replace it. In San Jose, in the, the big city, in the 10 big city in the United States, we have many Vietnamese schools. They're willing to provide you textbook. They're willing to do everything to provide the school in our district, anything you want. That's it. Come on, we thank you very much and listen to me. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think that is all we have for written comments. Uh, do we have, I mean, that in, in person, do we have anything on Zoom, Mary? Yes, we do. We have an online public comment from Winnie Nguyen, staff member. I teach both Vietnamese speakers and Vietnamese for non-native speaker classes. I use the textbooks for both programs. My colleagues and I need Ms. Nguyen Din to help us planning our lessons and produce high quality materials. I agree with Mr. Sun Lu and Ms. Phi Pham. Thank you. That is the end of online public comment. Thank you for that. Uh, Superintendent, do we have anybody with their raised hands or anybody on Zoom? We do not. Great, okay. So um, I, I believe that is the end of public comment. I do, I do wanna say thank you um, to everyone, whether you were here in person um, or you made a comment um, via the comments online. Um, we hear you and we do take the comments very seriously. Um, I also wanna remind us that the board is unable to respond to unagendized items um, under the Brown Act, no action can be taken. The board will continue to work with the administration and staff as in all matters to make sure that our programs and that our processes meet the standards and are culturally appropriate and meet the needs of our diverse community and make all of our students college and career ready. Again, since there can't be any discussion or action today, the board can track this matter and these concerns moving forward. All right, so I, um, I like to say in Vietnamese, um, only uh, cảm ơn và lắng nghe những lời phát biểu của thầy cô cũng như um, các uh, vị đại diện cộng đồng cũng như bên cơ quan truyền thông thì như Vương Lê có nói hồi đầu đó là um, cái nghị trình này không đưa vào trong uh, buổi họp thành ra là đây là cái buổi để mà mình chỉ phát biểu mà thôi thành ra tất cả các hội viên giáo dục không thể nào bàn cãi và uh, đi sâu vào cái vấn đề này được À, vì vậy thì Vân Lê cũng muốn nói là à, Vân Lê cũng đã đi thăm trường và Vân Lê cũng đã nói chuyện với một số thầy cô Vân Lê cũng hiểu thì khi cái vấn đề này được vào trong cái nghị trình thì tất cả các ủy viên giáo dục mới có thể bàn cãi được à, Vân Lê hy vọng rằng là ngày hôm nay thì tất cả ủy viên giáo dục cũng đã nghe và cũng đã nhận được rất là nhiều email Vân Lê cũng xin lỗi là không một số email Vân Lê chưa có trả lời được à, vì rất là bận hôm ngày hôm nay nhưng mà Vân Lê cũng mong rằng là sẽ tiếp tục làm việc với Liên minh học khu để mà có thể tìm ra một cái giải pháp gì đó 
Uh, I didn't mention that uh, because the Brow Act, but uh, we acknowledge all of those comments from uh, teachers, from community leaders, from media, we cannot act, we cannot discuss anything uh, because uh, this not item is not agendized in the meeting. Uh, hopefully that we will work together in the future. Um, and uh, we want to acknowledge and thank you for the comments. Uh, I also mentioned that I uh, went to visit uh, several schools uh, and uh, talk to the teachers so I understand uh, the problem. Yes, thank you for translating, Trustee Lake. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, first of all, I just want to make my comment in English first, and then uh, hopefully I'll try my best to translate in Vietnamese. But um, as my colleagues have all, all have said, uh, the item, because the item is not, has not been agenda into, uh, we cannot discuss today. However, um, we, we have heard you. We want to acknowledge and thank you for your comment. Uh, I also want to add that, like my colleagues, I have visited uh, many schools in the districts. I'm aware of the concern. And um, I have discussed these issues with our administrator and moving forward, we'll continue to listen to you. Thank you. All right, we are on item number 11, 11.01. Superintendent. Thank you all. Um, this is again, a resolution and uh, <clears throat> asking the board to uh, adopt the resolution 22-23-17 authorizing remote teleconference meetings of the board and the board of district committees subject to the Brown Act from the period of January 13th through February 13th. Okay, so we have a resolution here. Do we have a motion? Uh, move for approval. All right. Seconded. So moved by Trustee Herrera, seconded by Trustee Lay. Uh, Lee, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, rest of the board, how do you vote? Aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, we have a unanimous vote. Um, now moving on to item 11.02, uh, Superintendent. Uh, given the extreme demand across our state for uh, facilitators and working with retreat and the development of the board across of the boards across the state, we were able to identify uh, a partner in their work for March 4th and 11th, March 4th and 11th, and we were polled earlier on that. So this item is requested that we uh, reschedule the January 28th meeting and that we um, add four board retreat dates, March 4th and March 11th. Um, yes, both days. Both. Um, March 4 and March 11th. Okay, uh, this is this needs to be. Yes, that we would take action to Great. reschedule from January 28th to March 4 and March 11th. Great, so we need a motion. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. I'll second. So we have a motion uh, from Trustee Doe, seconded by Trustee Cortezi. Uh, Lee, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, colleagues, how do you vote? Aye. 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 We have a unanimous aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? It is unanimous aye. Okay, passes. All right, so now moving on to section 12 of the agenda, 12.01. Um, I think this is Assistant Superintendent Marte. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is a first reading of proposed amendments to board policy 5146, which speaks about married pregnant parenting students. This is a requirement as part of our federal program monitoring. Um, just as a note, um, we are deleting the administrative regulation that accompanies the board poly as um, CSBA and GAMET no longer have that administrative regulation and it's all not covered under the board policy. And this is just a first reading. Um, do we have a motion on the, on the floor? Yeah, do we have to, no, okay. Great, so um, are there any questions or comments on this item? Okay, seeing none, we are moving on to the next one. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we are moving on to section 13, 13.01. Uh, 
Miss Huntoon, is this you? Good evening. So this first item in section 13, 13.01, um, we currently have a contract with the state for the California State Preschool Program. And so this is to continue that program into the 2023-24 school year. Um, do we have a motion or yes, question? Well, just, just to clarify for those who are watching, um, this is a contract that we hold, but we subcontract the actual performance of the, we don't actually provide the preschool. We. No, we, we have, we yeah, we have the contract with the state and it is contracted out. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just want to clarify that for people who are, our viewing audience. They're wondering what, what, this is the high school right. district. Why, what does why it have to do with preschool? preschool? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they are on our campuses. We have um, several. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Any other comments, questions, clarification? No. Okay. So uh, do we have a motion on the floor to move this? Move for approval. I have a motion by Trustee Doe. Seconded. Um, Lee, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Passes unanimously. Ms. Hintoon, I think you're 13.02 as well. Yes. And so this is the same um, instance where we currently have a contract with the Department of Education, and this one is for child care and development program. So this would allow for us to continue into the 2023-24 school year. And as Trustee Cortese had mentioned, um, this is a little bit different. This is for infant and toddler program as opposed to the preschool that we just talked about. So this is to continue our funding. We have a motion on the floor from Trustee Lay. Do we have a second? Right. Second by Trustee Doe. Lee, how do you vote? Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Passes unanimously. Next uh, meeting. So now we're on to section 14. Um, this is resolution 22-23-21, declaring observance of Lincoln's birthday, Mr. Wynn. Thank you, Madam President. This is a standard item that we do each year. Um, officially, Lincoln's birthday is recognized as February 12th. However, however, because of our winter holiday, we observe it on February 24th. And so in order to do that, we have to adopt a resolution to state such, and we're allowed to do so. Thank you for that. Are there any questions or comments, colleagues? Do I have a motion on the floor? Move for approval. Second. Moved by Trustee Doe, seconded by Trustee Cortezzi. Lee, how do you vote? Aye. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, abstain. Passes unanimously. Okay, um, there's nothing under section 15. Um, all right, consent calendar. All right. Move for approval of the okay. consent calendar. Uh, we're doing the, the moving, making a motion and seconding it at the same time. So moved by Trustee Herrera, seconded by Trustee Doe. Lee, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, none. Um, th that was not a nay on my end, by the way. Um, I, I agree. Um, so passes unanimously. All right. So now we are on to section 21, written reports and recommendation. Um, I don't think there's anything here. Nothing here. Okay. Uh, 22. All right. Opportunity for the board of trustees to request uh, items for future agenda. 22.01. So, colleagues. Yes. Yes, go ahead. I would like to request um, for discussion about uh, out of pocket expenditures by teachers and any other staff, how this district tracks that, and how we might remediate that. It's in there? Yes. Oh, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any other future agenda items? Okay. All right. So, Let's go on to section number 23. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'd like to request um, the uh, public comment earlier from the Vietnamese American community and the media to, uh, to be agendized. I will send an email to my colleagues, more presence um, with more detail. Okay. So given, um, based on the public comments that we heard today, I agree that it is an important issue. Um, however, there can be any discussion on this today. Um, for Brown Act. 
Um, but uh, similar how we've addressed other issues in the, con in the past, any issues and concerns, um, I'd like to suggest that we first have an understanding of how the district textbooks and instruction materials are prepared, purchased, and used. So in other words, like what are the processes that we have in place and how are they structured to address the types of concerns that we've heard today? Um, and this can be done in an open session or an upcoming board meeting. Um, and then once we review those processes, then we'll be able to figure out what is the most appropriate way to respond, um, be it amendments to board policies or resolutions or any other measure. How does that sound? I'm open to uh, any processes, how we move forward, the right. timing, how we move forward. But I do want to take the opportunity to, to evaluate and study the how we as an organization um, address not only the concern, but also, like as you said, um, an overall, overall view of how textbooks will be created and, and being produced. So we can do so both. Can, can we do that, what, what I just suggested? Yeah, I think we hear the sentiment by each of the board trustees, and yeah. we will make sure that we take the most appropriate next step. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so now um, if we can go to item 23. We are moving through this pretty quickly, y'all. Look at that. It's still 7 o'clock. I know. Okay, I'm going to keep on going. <laughs> uh 23 any comments uh so we will start with um my left with uh trustee light um well happy new year <laughs> and next week is the happy tet so i wish everyone as a you know double happy new year in, uh, in a different culture uh, but uh, before we have a break, uh, before in January, I did visit uh, YB, Santa Teresa, uh, Andrew Hill. I want to say thank you to Principal Mary Paulette, um, Principal Dr. Jesus uh, Morgan, and uh, Principal Jose Hernandez, as well as all of the teachers, all of the staff have been worked very hard and one of this principal has uh, uh, supporting and, uh, you know, guide me to those wellness center and walk me to one of those glass room. Uh, I also visit Overfell High School and uh, for the um, McKinney Vento and, and also YB. Um, and I really observe, uh, you know, the, the student that receive one of those gift cards. And even though it went to Andrew Hills and one of the community member also uh, went with me uh, to the trip and really see that our work is really validated. So I'm very happy and I'll continue to go back to, to one of those schools and visit. Uh, and I think it's that's very much that I have uh, during the couple of weeks uh, holidays. Thank you. And now for this right, for yes, for this right, uh, Trustee Herrera. Um, I do not have any comment. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, we, we will take that, uh, Trustee Cortezzi. Uh, I have no comment either, other than to wish our community uh, happy. Um, Vietnamese New Year, Chuk Mong Namoy. Yes, um, and uh, all I have to say is Happy New Year, Happy Tet, Feliz Año Nuevo. Um, and now with that, um, we will move on to our next person, um, Ms. Uh, Lee Henny. Um, I also have no comment other than next Sunday, Happy Lunar New Year. All right, uh, Superintendent Vanderzee. All right, I guess we, I'll keep wishing everybody a new year and that which is coming, uh, lunar or otherwise, um, and just uh, want to reiterate, uh, thanks for everybody. I hope they're rested and had a break and stayed somewhat dry um, and just really glad to see uh, our staff and students back at it again, starting the second semester and being about good things. And as always, um, in East Side, we'll make sure that our education is meeting the needs of our students, is relevant to our area, and propels them forward to success. Um, I know that we've always been working towards that, and we will continue to do so um, and uh, work with our community in that capacity. 
for that. Um, colleagues, board meeting evaluation. What do we have to say? Short I think and sweet. that our new board president is uh, shining brightly yes. and adjourning even before 7.30. Oh, my goodness. Most of our staff are happy to get you back. We are, we are working hard to make it happen. All right. We go cancel. Um, do you have anything to report out? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Close, close session item 2.02. .02. In the matter of uh, expulsion number 2223-005, the board unanimously approved the suspended expulsion. In the matter of 2223-006, the board unanimously approved a stipulated agreement in lieu of expulsion. In the matter of 2223-007, the board unanimously approved a stipulated agreement in lieu of expulsion. In the matter of 2223-008, the board unanimously approved a stipulated expulsion. Closed session item 2.05, the board unanimously approved uh, a compulsory leave of absence for one certificated employee pursuant to education code 44940 and 449 for 0 0.5. There are no further actions to report. Thank you. It is 722. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>